So adding the alto and tenor, especially if you've already added the bass and soprano, which should always be your first step, is adding those outer voices. They're so incredibly important, and they have the most possible errors. Uh, those are the, the soprano and bass are the first voices you should add. Adding the alto and tenor is relatively straightforward because you know you have two voices, a soprano line and a bass line, that are, to the best of your ability, written correctly. So there are no parallels, no direct uh, uh, direct fifths or octaves, no illegal parallels rather, and now you just have to double check spacing issues. So the first thing I would do is add the alto, uh, since it's the it, since spacing is such an issue with, between soprano and alto, and tenor and bass it, spacing issues are not such a problem. So I would add the alto because uh, to avoid some of the spacing issues that can arise between soprano and alto. So we already have. Uh, let me lower the volume here a little bit. We already have a soprano line, um, and we're going to add an alto line here. And so the one chord in C major, we already have, we've already doubled the root. And I'm going to go ahead and choose the pitch closest to uh, the soprano line that fits in this chord. In this case, it's going to be, um, some of these stems might be a little messed up, uh, is going to be the G. Okay, so yes, we're still missing a note, but we have the opportunity to add that with the tenor line. You could have added the E instead of the G uh, to complete to make them more complete chord, but I'm gonna I'm gonna follow this procedure just to uh, uh, just to keep it simple and you know have uh, uh, not deal with too many spacing errors and 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 uh, other issues that might arise. So we have a G. We're gonna compare uh, the next pitch should be either an A or an F in the four chord. I'm going to go with an A, okay? And so we'll compare to make sure there's similar motion between bass and alto, and that's not a problem. Uh, it's oblique between soprano and alto, not a problem. So, so far, so good. No, uh, no issues there. Then we're going to go to the two chord. If we can stay put, let's stay put. And in this case, we can stay put on A. I'm going to flip these voices again. And that's totally fine. Oblique motion. And we know we only need to worry about comparing the alto to the soprano and to the bass because we already know because we'd already double checked the motion between soprano and bass earlier. So this is fine. It's oblique motion that almost never causes any issues. Um, so we have oblique motion. We're doing great. Now we're going to move to the next uh, pitch. And let's go ahead and go by step up to the leading tone B right here. Uh, and that also is not an issue. We have similar motion between the bass and the, and the alto, which is fine. It's not uh, causing any issues. And oblique motion, again, between soprano and alto. And then typically you'll, that leading tone needs to resolve to, to do back up to scale degree one. Oops, B, C, like that. Now, we already have the soprano sort of filling in that um, that uh, resolution for us. So the ear is already going to hear it that way. So let's let's take advantage, especially since it's, it's in an inner voice, the leading tone is always great to resolve. And it has to if it's in the outer voice. But it, in an inner voice like the alto, it has the option of, uh, of moving to another pitch to help fill out the chord, especially if uh, an upper voice or another voice rather, in this case the soprano, is filling in the pitch where it would normally go. So this leading tone would normally go up to the C. But the soprano is kind of already doing it for us. So we have the option of filling out the chord a little bit further by putting in that G. So now we have a doubled root and a fifth in here. So uh, we've already checked and there are no issues here. Uh, we have similar motion between all three voices, but I don't see any, any parallel fifths or parallel octaves or a direct fifth doesn't occur between the inner voices and the outer voices. Remember, direct fifths and direct octaves only happen between the outer voices. Now let's go ahead and add the tenor line. The tenor line is, whoops, that's not what I wanted. Tenor line again happens in the bass voice here. It's doing something weird. Oh, I know why. Sorry. So we're going to flip these. G, C, perfect. So we're going to add the tenor line, which is going to end up being in the bass uh, staff over here. Uh, we're gonna fill out the chord, so it needs an E. We're gonna start with that E, and that E moving to F to fill out that chord even more, and you'll notice uh, we have similar motion between alto and tenor. 
similar motion between tenor and bass, oblique between soprano and tenor. So far, no issues at all. Spacing is not an issue, uh, and it's the correct pitch. So let's stay put if we can, and lo and behold, we can stay, we can stay put. And that completes that chord. So now we have a complete two chord, D, F, and A. Uh, oblique motion between uh, the tenor and bass and the tenor and soprano. Uh, and then we have, um, uh, we have uh, uh, no motion between the, uh, uh, between the alto and the tenor. Okay, they just stay put. Now, next we have, uh, we need to go to the five chord. Uh, let's see, let's fill it out with, oh, let's go to the G. So we have similar motion between the bass and the tenor. And we have similar motion between the tenor and the alto, which is totally fine. And we have oblique motion between soprano and tenor. And we're totally fine right here. Um, there are probably other options that we can do, but we, we want to do this to also avoid any possible spacing errors or any parallels that might occur. This is just a, this is a fine option, maybe one of two or three different possibilities. And then finally, let's move down to the E. Oops. Move down to... Uh, that was a problem. Sorry about that. Uh, just a quick error fix, so that way we have full note. So we move from in the tenor from G down to E to complete the chord, and we have similar motion between all of the voices, but so far not a not a big issue. Like it, it, it probably would have been better if we had some contrary motion, but in this case, it's not not too bad of an issue. Um, we probably, if we wanted to kind of modify this, maybe we leap down here, although we get kind of a weird outline of, of the bass line here in, this, in, the, in the bass. Maybe we instead would have wanted to move everything down, <clears throat> down a little bit so that way we get a little bit more contrary motion. And that's something that you could check later on. But you notice we can check it later on when we know 95% of the dictation is already really well done. Um, and so make sure that you're always checking the voices and, uh, and comparing it um, slowly one by one. So 